Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to Iron Juggernaut 10 man normal in the Siege of Ogrimmar raid. And this is a two phase boss fight so as you fight him he will switch from phase 1 to phase 2, from phase 1 to phase 2 until you kill the boss or the boss kills you. So let's go over the abilities. So in the assault mode aka phase 1 he will do something called a boar drill. He will drill one of his arms into the ground that will release three set of spikes that will follow people around. If they hit them it will do around 75k physical damage. Next, laser burn, he will just target a random player with a laser, you can't do anything about that. It will do around 250k fire damage and it will leave a dot that will tick for around 55k every two seconds. Mortar cannon, he will target a random player with his mortar cannon. This will create an 8 yard circle on the ground, it's really easy to see, it's just this huge circle. And after a short delay, he will fire a shrapnel inflicting 250k fire damage to everyone within that circle. Crawler mines, now this is the most important one in this phase. He will throw three mines around the field and they will start ticking. They all have the same amount of time before they explode and if they do each one of them it will inflict 300,000 physical damage to everyone in the raid. So that's almost a million, everyone's dead, GG. Here's the thing, you can jump on the mine and instead of the entire raid taking 300,000 damage you will take a million and 200,000 physical damage. So how are you going to deal with this? Well, either you can use poly bubbles or personal cooldowns, boomkins are really good at soaking these but you have to wait 3 minutes to soak another one. But you have one tank tanking the boss and the other one just running around, jumping on these mines, soaking them with a, you know, DR. And the last thing in this phase is called Flame Vents. Now this is the tank debuff, but it's not your normal CC tank debuff. This is a tank debuff. This bloody thing hurts like hell. So in a frontal cone he will inflict 300,000 fire damage. This will apply Ignite Armor, which increases fire damage taken by 10%. It stacks, of course. And it will sear the target's flesh, and that will deal, which is a dot, you know, it will deal around 30,000 fire damage every second. This will stack. So your tanks need to swap. Are they dead? Very dead. Now let's go over to Siege Mode, aka Phase 2. Now in this one he'll be stationary, he will just drill his arms into the ground and he will not hit on the tanks, he will not move. Instead he will do something called Seismic Activity. He will cause an earthquake and this earthquake will do 40,000 nature damage to everyone every second. Now that might not sound like a lot but trust me it kinda hurts when you're not ready for it. Especially when combined with the other abilities. So, one of them is called Shock Pulse. Every now and then he will knock everyone back. And this is a knocky knockback. This knockback knocks you back really far. You will fly 100 yards away from the boss. The best way to deal with this is just have something behind you. You know, stand against a wall or something when he's doing this. Just not get knocked back because when everyone gets knocked back they're scattered all over the place and you're probably gonna die trying to get back to the boss. Next we have Demolisher Cannons now. He will just randomly fire at players and inflict around 150k fire damage within 6 yards. So this is the reason why you're spread out at least 6 yards for this phase. Next on the list we have Cutter Laser now. This ability will chase players and it will do around 200 thousand fire damage every second if it catches up with them which is not that bad you can just run away from it it's not that fast but the problem is he will also spew these explosive tires around the place which are these black pools of goo and these will just do 20k nature damage if you stand in them they will slow you down by 30 percent but if you run the cutter laser into one of these explosive tires it will just explode dealing 200 thousand fire damage to everyone in the raid so please be careful with those and don't kite the laser over the tars. So that's all the abilities and now that we know what the hell is going on on the screen let's go over the tactics. Okie dokie artichoke so for this fight I recommend two tanks three healers and the rest DPS. If you can get a resto droid oh my god get a resto droid they're so good for this fight just get a resto droid. If you're not doing this fight just get a resto droid anyway they're awesome. Right, so, phase 1. In this phase you need to worry about one thing, and that's your tanks. You need to bitch heal your tanks. Okay, they're gonna take so much damage. The flame vent, the frontal cone, does a lot of damage, plus the debuff increases fire damage they take, plus the dot stacks, it's just, oh, so much damage, plus they need to soak the mines. And this is how we dealt with it. Right? Tank 1 pulled the boss. He was tanking the boss until the first mines came, then tank 2 taunted and tank 1 picked up all these bombs. 
it's really good because we're using a DK he was able to stack his um, shield whatever it's called blood shield the mastery thing and he was able to soak the first mine without any cooldown reduction and take almost no damage but still you need to just bitch heal them and then you know rinse and repeat you will just you know tank taunts and the other tank goes and soaks the mine In this footage I am actually soaking the mines because boomkins are really good but you also have a cooldown for it now the other things are not that important but they're still important if you're two healing this which is a suicide even if you're three healing this your healers can't really afford healing your stupid ass because you got hit by a lot of stuff they just need to focus the tanks and just heal someone who kind of derped out but you just can't derp out 10 times in a row you can't get hit 10 times in a row okay you will just kill your tanks by doing that okay even if the healer heals you up he might run out of mana or he just won't be able to heal the tank in time and tank will die and I think that's gonna happen basically to almost everyone who pulls this boss your tank will die because the amount of damage they take is actually insane it's a lot but it's not too much okay so it's the first phase just run away from everything and bitch heal your tanks phase number two and phase two requires a lot of movement this is why you want a resto druid because resto druids are not penalized by movement at all in this video I'm still here as a boomkin but the next pull, our third pull, I went in as Resto and I was just exploding with healing and we killed the boss. It's not that difficult. But in this phase, nothing from the first phase aside from the three bombs is there. Okay, the three bomb things is the only thing that will remain from the first phase throughout phase two. But in phase two, these bombs are not that big of a deal. Since the boss is not attacking the tanks, their stacks will drop off and you have two tanks to deal with three bombs, which is just fine. By the way, you can also use poly bubbles and stuff like that. When the bombs are not that big of a deal, what is, you might ask? Well, everything else. All the abilities combined. That's why this encounter is so enjoyable for me, because the abilities work, they synergize. Let me tell you an example. Someone is targeted by the beam. They have a tar behind them, and they are about to be knocked back. Okay, they get knocked back. The laser will run over the tar as it's trying to catch up with them. It will explode for 200,000 damage. At this point, people are scattered because of the knocked back. And the earthquake will finish them off as they're trying to run back to the boss and be healed. This is why this boss is so beautiful, because everything works, everything synergizes. So, the first thing you need to worry about is laser hitting the tar. That's the biggest thing. This can wipe you if you're not careful with it. So every time you're about to be knocked back, look behind you if you have a laser on you, just in case there's a tar behind you. If you get knocked back and the beam will start chasing you that way, will it hit any tars? If yes, then move. You're in a wrong spot. Okay? Next tip is probably try and stick to one area without being closer than six yards of each other. So that you avoid people getting hit by you know same abilities at once and let your tanks soak the mines in, the, in phase two there is no reason for anyone else to soak the mines by the way right here I'm trying to evade the boss I you know I'm trying if it's possible to evade it when we are about to wipe and a mine runs up to me and sits right in front of my face which I thought was pretty funny and that's basically it for this phase. It's not too difficult. Just pick a general area where you're all gonna kind of group up with six yards between each player. Try to not kite any of the lasers over any of the tars. Let your tanks handle all the mines and just don't get hit by stupid things. And that's it. Ta-da! Many loots. This boss, as I've said, is not very difficult, but the abilities synergize in a very beautiful way. I hope this was helpful. I wish you good luck and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.